Oliver Installment of AA Computers and Technology and I'm really excited for Thanksgiving break because I actually have the next four videos planned out ahead of time. That's really weird because I don't, I usually don't even have the next video planned out ahead of time. So I'm really excited. Can't wait to make those videos. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. I did find a really neat garage sale find today and it's hidden over there off camera so I don't spoil it. Uh, but I did run into some problems with it. So we're going to talk about that during that video. So just a little snippet of what's to come. So we got a garage sale find. I actually have some more animations coming up. Uh, so it's going to be really neat. Can't wait for Thanksgiving. Let's go ahead and get started with this video though. Now on the Microsoft website, it says that you need a minimum of one gigabyte of RAM to run Windows 10. Now it also said that about Windows 7. And we tested that and that was not true. We went all the way down to 256 megabytes of RAM with Windows 7 before running into any issues. And it performed pretty well with 256 megabytes of RAM installed. So I'm going to take this Gateway 832 GM with Windows 10 installed on it. We currently have one gigabyte of RAM in the system. I'm going to pull out one of the sticks and leave us with 512 megabytes of DDR RAM installed. And we're going to see if Windows 10 boots and how well it performs with that amount of RAM, if it even boots at all. So let's go ahead, take the system apart and pull that one stick of RAM out of the system. Currently there are two sticks of 512 megabyte DDR RAM in the system. I'm going to go ahead and pop one of those sticks out to cut our one gigabyte of DDR RAM in half. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out that second stick back here. Pop that up, pull it out, and hopefully Windows 7, or not <laughs> Windows 7, Windows 10 will still boot on this machine. So let's go ahead, put everything back together, and try it out. Now I have the one stick of RAM right here in my hand, but if some of you guys don't trust me, I'm going to go into the BIOS and show you that there is indeed only 512 megabytes of RAM installed on the system. So I have my PS2 keyboard right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit F2 over and over and over and over again. And we should go right into the BIOS. Right there, you can see that our total memory is set at 512 megabytes. So. I'm going to boot directly from the BIOS so I can't change anything. No fancy editing going on here. Just going to escape. Or I guess exit. I'm just going to go ahead and enter. <laughs> and we'll see if uh, Windows 10 even boots. And I'm going to switch over to my Logitech keyboard. And look at that. We have already booted to the login screen. That was fast uh, even with 512 megabytes of RAM installed that was pretty impressive uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in I don't want to see you uh, I don't want to show you guys my login information so I'm gonna uh, skip that part in the video and then we'll uh, check out how the uh, operating system performs with this amount of RAM installed when I had one gigabyte of RAM installed Windows 10 actually used over 512 megabytes of RAM when sitting idle so I'm curious to see how the system is managing resources right now so I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the task manager and check out what everything looks like. Come on. And I'm curious to see if it's made, uh, if it's coming into that page file on the hard drive yet, or if we're still uh, going off the RAM. Just a little note right here, when I went back and started editing everything, I noticed that when we first opened up the task manager, the disk usage is already at 100%. So we might already be cutting into that page file at this point. It doesn't feel like it. The system is still pretty responsive, but that might be a possibility. Um, so currently our memory usage is at 91%. So we're still doing everything in the RAM. Haven't moved over to the hard drive just yet, it appears. And it doesn't feel like that either because everything's still pretty smooth. Um, but you can see we are using 452, uh, or actually it's increasing right now, but we are using approximately 460 megabytes uh, of the available 486 megabytes. So we're really close to that ceiling. We're not going to be able to do much with this uh, installation of Windows 10 because we're pretty much already out of memory. So I think I'm going to close the task manager to save on resources and uh, I'm going to try to open up a couple applications. I'm going to start with some lighter applications and then work all the way up to browsing the web on the system, which I don't really think it will be able to do. When we open up Microsoft Edge, the system will probably just crash, um, but we'll see. So as I said, we're starting off with light applications. I'm going to open up an instance of file. Go into the C drive windows because that has a lot of files in it and just scroll around here. 
not really having any issues there and I didn't expect to. I'm going to minimize this because I'm going to see if we can open up multiple applications at one time uh, and how well that works on 512 megabytes of RAM. How's Cortana working? I actually do plan on disabling Cortana right after we try it out because it's causing some issues for me. Um, so what is the weather tomorrow? What? And this is not very responsive at all. Oh my goodness. What is the weather tomorrow in my location? All right. Oh, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow and there's a 90% chance. That is kind of depressing. But Cortana does work with 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, not very well. I did have a lot of uh, trouble actually typing in that, as you saw. Uh, wasn't very responsive, but Cortana does work. And Cortana is out of here. So I'm going to go back to the search bar, uh, which no longer contains Cortana. And we are going to open an instance of WordPad now, working our way up. WordPad. Oh, you know, I forgot. I always forget it. it's one word. There we go. It's taking a little bit longer to open uh, than when I had a full gigabyte of RAM installed. I know it was pretty much instantaneous when we had the one gigabyte of RAM in the system, uh, but it's still opened and it looks like it's still going to be usable. And the generic phrase that we all love is about to be typed in here. Hello, YouTube. And let's manipulate the font. Play around a little bit with the size and the style. Hello, YouTube. And let's change that to a nice, brilliant orange. How about that? So WordPad is working just fine along with File Explorer. And now that we have multiple applications open at the same time, let's try out that task view. And there we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. As you can see, I went ahead and closed WordPad and the File Explorer because I tried to open up Edge with those running in the background and it was a no-go. Windows 10 did not like that at all and the system pretty much locked up for a couple seconds before I closed out Edge. Um, so I'm going to open Edge back up with those two applications closed and uh, no other applications running in the background and hopefully we won't have those same issues. And as you can see, we do not. So I'm gonna to browse to my website, which isn't very resource intensive, and then we'll go to YouTube and then CNN because CNN is just an absolute nightmare. So www.aacomputersandtechnology.com Still haven't fixed the font issue because I've just been lazy and trying to get other stuff up. So haven't really been worrying too much about it. Let's go to archives, computers, and I think we usually click on the uh, HP, uh, what is it? The HP DC uh, 7800P. Search faster. I don't care. Please stop. Oh my goodness, notifications, you are killing me. And the system is beginning to lock up. <laughs> I'm opening up all these images and the system is just struggling. It is not going to have that. So I think I'm going to try to close out of this. If I can uh, even get the system to start responding again. Um, I mean, it seems like right now I am uh, locked out, unfortunately. So I'm going to cut this clip and come back when I can actually get a response from the system. Even though I expected that to happen, it's still kind of disappointing. I thought Edge would at least be able to handle my website with this amount of RAM. Uh, so I'm going to try to open it up one more time and navigate to YouTube. And as you just heard, my keyboard went flying to the ground. Uh, but I'm going to pop it open and see if I can't get onto YouTube. Uh, if I couldn't even get onto my website, which is relatively light, I doubt I'm going to be able to get onto YouTube, but who knows? We'll see. Maybe all of those images uh, just put too much into the memory, um, and that caused it to crash. 
Uh, come on, Edge. Oh, okay. Are we, uh, are we even going to open a tab? I think I broke Microsoft Edge. <laughs> All right. www. Dot, okay. And it is being very unresponsive right now. YouTube. Whoa. Whoa, okay. And I'm just going to go down one because we have uh, recently visited this site. So I'm just going to uh, go to the URL that is already there. And... Uh, we got we had a not responding message up here in the corner for just a split second, but I think um, it started to respond again, and it looks like heck we might even be able to load the uh, homepage of YouTube. Let's see. I'm trying to find something to uh, talk about to fill the silence here, but I can't think of anything except that it is uh, pretty slow. I'm waiting for that gigantic ad to pop up right here. That's going to slow everything down. And uh, it has locked up. So you can see in the top left corner, we have that not responding message. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds on camera and then try to force close this because um, I think Edge has pretty much crashed. Maybe not. Uh, that not responding message went away. Can I navigate through the page? Ah, nope. All right, forget about that then. As you can see, it is just eating up the memory and the hard drive right now. I think it went ahead and created a page file and is going off the hard drive now because we're reading and writing constantly uh, according to the task manager. We're using, uh, we're, util we're utilizing 100% of disk C right now. So I'm pretty sure um, Windows 10 went ahead and moved all the stuff it couldn't fit onto the RAM into a page file on the hard drive. Uh, and right now it's just not working out very well because we're trying to load YouTube on Edge. Um, and once again, the system's just not having it. Uh, and if you're interested on how I actually managed to get the task manager up, I actually closed the instance of Edge that we had running earlier. Uh, I opened up task manager, threw it to the side, and then opened up a new instance of Edge. Uh, because with YouTube uh, on the other instance, it had completely locked up once again. Alright, so overall, I felt like that was a really negative user experience. I mean, for some of the stuff, it worked okay, like when we opened up the File Explorer, when we were just navigating around Windows in general, it was still kind of slow, but it was doable, um, and then also WordPad worked okay. But I feel like most of the time, Windows was moving all the stuff that we were doing into a page file because there just wasn't enough RAM. Uh, and for most of the time, I felt like the system wasn't really usable. With Windows 7, when we went all the way down to 256 megabytes of RAM, I still felt like I could use the system for everyday tasks. I could actually browse the web, uh, I could open up a word processor, I could have multiple applications open at the same time, and it still ran pretty smooth. But Windows 10, with 512 megabytes of RAM installed, doesn't just, it just doesn't feel usable. It's too slow. During this part, I felt like I was being just a little bit harsh. I think I expected a little bit more from Windows 10 just because it performed really well with one gigabyte of RAM. Now, you saw the footage, and for the most part, everything opened and closed. The only thing I really had trouble with was Edge, so I'll leave it up to your opinion to uh, tell if it's really usable or not. Because I'm so impatient, that wouldn't be a usable system to me. Uh, but if you have the patience and uh, you're willing to work with it, I think it could be a usable system depending on who you are. So with that in mind, I guess we can conclude that Windows 10 is just a little bit heavier on the system resources and I wouldn't dare cut this down to 256 megabytes because it would just be horrendous. I don't even think, honestly, I don't even think it would boot. Um, I would like to try it just as an experiment to see if it would boot, not even use the system because I know it's going to be awful, but to see if it would actually boot on 256 megabytes of RAM, but I don't have a lone stick of DDR RAM that uh, only contains 256 megabytes. So uh, not going to be able to do that just yet. If I get a stick in, I might do it in a later video, but not right now. Uh, so I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out those videos coming up next week. They're going to be awesome. I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.